Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, I'm going to do a watch video, which I have not done in a very long time. Um, it's not that I've stopped collecting watches, I just haven't really focused on doing videos on them. But this is a company that uh, a friend brought to my attention, and I thought it was quite interesting within the micro brand um, or enthusiast brand, whatever you want to call it, realm. And it really comes down to the case hardening technology that they utilize and the price they do it for. Now, this thing is extremely feature rich in every other aspect, but I think that the fact that it utilizes a case hardening is really what sets it apart, makes it interesting for me, and I think it would make it interesting for my viewers because heat treat and Rockwell hardness is something that knife enthusiasts really understand the importance of, and it's really interesting that it can be applied to watch cases as well to make them scratch resistant. So, um, that's why this video is coming about. So the brand specifically is called Traska. Uh, again, small micro brand, enthusiast brand, um, like a three person team. They currently have three models in their lineup. This is the smallest of them. This is the commuter. Um, it is sold out, unfortunately, but they also have the summiter. Uh, they have a few left on their website. And then they have the free diver and they're doing a new drop of the free diver this Sunday, May 9th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So again, if this company kind of speaks to you or you're interested in the case hardening technology, uh, might be worth checking out the free diver this Sunday. So let's jump into the specs a little bit and then I'm going to try to delve into the case hardening. Again, this is not a, a peer reviewed look at case hardening technology. I've seen some of the articles that exist on the web and people seem to get a little bit heated about the particulars. So we're gonna keep this high level. Please don't try to drown me in the comments. Um, but this particular one, this is their smallest watch and it actually comes in with a case diameter of 36 and a half millimeters. And I found that interesting because I've never tried a watch this small before and I wanted to see if it would work on my seven and a half inch wrist. And I think it works, you may or may not agree. Um, my wife also likes it, she thinks it works, but there it is on my seven and a half inch wrist. So uh, 36 and a half millimeters. The total thickness um, on the case at least is about 10 millimeters thick. So, uh, you know, fairly, you know, fairly thin overall. Um, case is nicely curved here, hugs the wrist well. Does use a boxed sapphire crystal gives it some lovely distortion around the edges here. And again, this is a kind of a vintage size watch, so I think that the uh, slight distortion with the box crystal is very appropriate for um, this style of watch. Uh, case is done in a combination of uh, satin finishing along with some polished, polished edges here. Does use a push button clasp here, has some perlage. Um, finishing on the clasp, which is interesting. It is water resistant to a hundred meters. And the bracelet tapers from about uh, 20 millimeters all the way down to 16 millimeters. The bracelet does fully articulate. As you can see here, the lugs are drilled um, for an easy change. And then the bracelet here uh, does use screws, which again, I greatly appreciate. There's some micro adjustments available on the bracelet. And let's see what else in the spec realm here that we wanna talk about. Uh, dial, this is the white dial. Has a slight sunburst effect. The sunburst is actually a bit more prominent on the other colors that they had. Uh, diamond cut hands. Some nice polishing around the date window here. We've got the applied hour markers. Um, very clean dial overall. I mean, there's some influence here from the Oyster Perpetual, some from the SKX, um, some from a, a vintage Chinese watch that John, the owner, owns. So he, he drew inspiration from several of his favorite watches, and basically he says, I build what I like, and, uh, you know, thankfully for him, it sells out pretty quick. I mean, this run, when, the, when it released, sold out in seven minutes, um, all colors. So pretty remarkable. There's certainly... Um, some excitement or demand here for some of these smaller watches. All right, anything else on the case before we jump into the case hardening, which again is what I find super interesting. So when it when it comes to, you know, a 316L stainless steel case, 
the typical hardness when we're talking in terms of Rockwell is actually about 17. Um, and again, for my you know knife enthusiasts, most blade steels are between 58 and 62, arguably. So 17 on the Rockwell is is pretty low. And, you know, it does result in a lot of, you know, kind of scratches and dings and scuffs uh, over time, which, you know, uh, desk dive marks or just standard wear. So it's my Monta Ocean King, and it's got plenty of scratches kind of all over it. Again, some people really like kind of the, the wear that they put on their watches. Other people would prefer to keep them pristine. So I've worn this watch every day for at least three, probably four weeks, and there's not a single scratch. So how do they accomplish that? And what's the actual Rockwell on this one? So Traska um, uses, a, it's a proprietary approach according to them, but essentially it's a surface hardening technology, similar to like a diamond light coating or DLC type coating where the surface layer is embedded with carbon. And the Rockwell is taken up to, Again, looking at the conversions, it's like 1200 HV on the Vickers scale or about 69 HRC on the Rockwell scale, which again is tremendously hard. So again, it's, it's surface layer deep, but it does keep the scratches away. You have other brands like Damasco here that um, they do a full heat treat throughout, so it's uniform. It's not just at the surface level, but it's not quite as hard as, you know, as this surface layer. Uh, Zinn is another German brand that uses kind of the surface layer harding, hardening. I believe they refer to it as a tegmented case. Um, Bremont uses another um, case hardening technology. Seiko uses the, the Dia Shield, which I believe is most akin to probably a clear Cerakote because it's certainly not as hard as the other coatings um, and that I believe it can wear off over time. But I have not had any Seikos with the Dia Shield. So um, anyways, that's, that's what I find fascinating is, I mean, you're getting all of these other specs. I mean, it's got the Miyota Movement, Sapphire Crystal, Articulating Links, you know, polishing, you know, drilled lugs. I mean, it's got everything there, plus it has the case hardening, which I find fascinating. Um, and their whole line does it, which again, I think is really cool. And it just puts it a step above a lot of the other micro brands who are not doing that. Um, so, you know, again, and, and it's doing it for quite a reasonable price. I mean, this Damasco DC56SI is uh, like six times the price of this watch. Um, you know, we could argue the merits of other things, but, uh, you know, and lots of watches, again, just get kind of the scratches on them over time. So anyways, that's, that's why I find it fascinating. That's why I thought you guys might like to check this one out. Um, but they, the brand itself continues to do drops um, over time. They're smaller runs, and then they take feedback from consumers and implement them on every single new run to try to get as close as possible. On their first run that they did utilizing the case hardening technology, it actually darkened the case quite a bit and made it look a little bit more like titanium, um, probably akin to what this Damasco looks like. And, you know, his... his uh, Consumers weren't terribly fond of the darker coloration, so they were able to eventually get it a little bit closer to the standard stainless steel color, but still have the same hardness properties. So, anyways, I think it's a cool brand. I like what they're doing. I like all the features that they give, and I like it for the price. Um, you know, again, other brands that do similar things are going to be Zinn, Damasco, Bremont, possibly Seiko with the, with the Dia Shield. So, um, you know, if you didn't weren't aware that this was happening, uh, there's a couple things to research, um, or you can go check out this brand. So, you know, final conclusions, I'm actually going to purchase this one. It was here on loan, but um, I like it enough. I find it interesting enough that I think it's worth keeping around. And, uh, you know, I may look at uh, more from this brand down the line. So comments, questions, I'll do my best to answer, but I mean, you're probably better off in going and asking this brand directly. Um, but you can follow me on Instagram for more daily content. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys soon.